housing at Redrew all this uh, Hollow Ambulance Station, uh, uh, the depot number three, which, um, which joins the site. And there's a church opposite here, uh, funeral, underta funeral undertakers, and uh, number 10, which, um, which is uh, an, exhaust center, an exhaust center. The building here is uh, Witch Elm House, which is currently under construction uh, for a residential scheme of up to 11, uh, up to 11 stories. And you can see how, it, how the site relates to the wider town centre. Uh, so in terms of planning history, I think it's important to uh, go through some of the context here. Um, as I mentioned, Witch Elm House, uh, which is a, an application for two that's consented and is under construction for two to 11 stories. Um, you have the former angle site, uh, which is uh, an application with up to 13 storeys, uh, so that's quite, a, quite, close to, quite close to the site. Um, and then obviously in the town centre you've got a consented scheme of uh, strawberry star. So um, just opposite, just I forgot to mention, uh, on the opposite side of the road of 4th Avenue is land at uh, Kitson Way, which is uh, nine storeys. So in terms of the site, um, as I said, it's a gym. Uh, you've got a few undertakers here. This area is currently a, a fairly mixed use, a mixed area. You have this office here, which is council line number three, which um, adjoins, adjoins the site, and beyond Rectory Wood. Um, that shows the application site looking down, looking down the chair with the funeral directors, and then the wood beyond. And this is the application site. This is the application site. Uh, the area is. Um, uh, in which it sits is within the town centre. Um, town centre boundary was, in, was in, extended to include this area um, because of the aim is to bring forward a number of different mixed use di mixed use developments. Um, so it shows the, this is looking from uh, looking back in the opposite direction from the last image uh, with rectory wood behind and showing the application the application sites of the churches uh, over on the, on the left hand side. Um, shows the uh, from the entrance to Witch Elm, um, shows the existing uh, car parking for the hospital, uh, the site, um, the ambulance station, and it just shows a little bit of the, a little bit of the uh, context. Um, so, in terms of the proposal, uh, pro this is the west elevation, so this is facing uh, the image I just showed, the photograph I just showed you, and um, it shows the building which is uh, 15 stories. Um, so this bit here is the tallest bit with 15, and there's a military space on top on this air, on this part here, and then it steps down 14 storeys, and then this is the 12th storey here, um, uh, which also has a military space uh, above, and then this part is uh, 11 storeys, and then down to as I said, six, down to six storeys of each, stepping down to six storeys eventually. Um, so showing the southern elevation. Um, which is, and that's the element that is uh, 12, 12 stories with the amenity space above, stepping down to uh, nine and then to down to six. Um, so in terms of the proposal, the, the proposal will, uh, is orientated. These plans here are quite odd because north is uh, this side, this is directory wood on this side, uh, and this is the east, uh, so on the ground floor. Commercial unit facing uh, the cycle way and directory wood, and then facing uh, this area, which is the, the main part of uh, which out towards where the fuel directors are, um, and showing the car parking, the car parking for uh, ten, uh, 10 spaces, uh, three boom bash, and uh, four uh, e uh, electric charging points. So, I will to go through all the uh, floor plans because they're relatively similar and I'll come back to them in due course. They're quite, quite a significant amount of bike storage being provided provide the first floor. Um, so, the second floor, um, they, do, they, they do repeat as they, go, as they obviously go up. Um, so, in terms of the main issues, I want to go through the principle and policy context, uh, the impact on the character of the area. Residential scheme in this location of an intended residential scheme is acceptable. 
Uh, coming on to the visual impact, uh, obviously the building has to sit within its context. And to test that, uh, the applicant has provided what is town called a townscape and visual impact analysis. And you can see from this plan, there are a number of different points uh, that have been tested to see, basically, can you see the building from these points? So what they do is they take, uh, take images and then they look at the change in levels across, uh, across the area uh, to see what the visual impact is. And basically, the visual impact of the scheme, which is located, uh, located here in the centre, you can only basically see the scheme from uh, the image in the basically number five, number two, and number nine are the three images that you can only really see this because there's existing buildings in the way and there's obviously the wood and there's also a change in levels from the town centre down to the, towards the site as well. So in terms of visual impact, um, one of the key views that you see the building is from First Avenue and Delaware Avenue Junction. You can see in this image the, uh, the building and how it would sit uh, in relation to that junction. And you can see the yellow outline is the existing building that's under construction, uh, which you know, has, as you can you'll see, you, you'll see the frame that's been there for quite some time. In terms of other impacts, uh, from, the, um, from the rear of the site, on the cycleway, you'll, you'll see the building uh, from this location, so you'll see how the building sits. Um, in relation to in relation to the Chelm House, which because there's a change in levels, you just see the building in this in this in this view. And in terms of uh, from Fourth Avenue, from the path that uh, goes into the town centre to West Square, uh, from Alden House, you see the see the building in question is shown in the blue with the blue out with the blue outline. Uh, obviously, this view would be dominated by which Young House, which is obviously at the front, and the uh, building at the back, uh, which is Fort Wood Young, is shown by the blue, the, blue, the, blue, the blue outline. So in terms of visual impact, it's considered that uh, it would not cause a detrimental impact in terms of the locality. Um, and also, also note at this point, the detailed design in terms of what it looks like, in terms of the illustration details, has been through an extensive process through the quality review panel and it is considered to be acceptable in terms of its design details and its old parlo. Um, so another, the other key thing in terms of the impact on the character area is the impact on adjacent land. Um, so this, is, this shows, um, uh, this was submitted by the applicant to show one potential, the potential this is the application site. showing what possibly could happen uh, on, the, on the opposite side of Witch Elm. Uh, obviously Witch Elm House here, as I've mentioned, is under construction, and this, this building here is the uh, consented building that uh, 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 Elmer House Car Park on Kingston Way. So you can see how this building was, could potentially sit within uh, a wider group uh, of, of the wider area. In terms of the key issue here for members, is whether this building would prejudice any future development coming forward. And the point of this building, this diagram is shown that it could, at least this is how something could happen, but not necessarily. And that'd be obviously for further determinations, further applications. Um, so uh, also of importance is the adjoining site, which is Three Wood Elm, uh, which is long and thin. Um, it's considered that it would not prejudice any development coming forward to the east of the site. Uh, because of the distance in, in bulk and also the fact that the units on, on, which, on the proposal for which are, are dual aspects. So you could accept some impacts in terms of loss of light to the windows on the end of these elevations because the units would still, still be served by windows on the, other, on the opposite sides. So they are, they are designed to take that into account. So in terms of the visual impact and also the impact in terms of prejudicing adjoining land, which is the policy test set out within policy H2, it's considered to be accessible. So coming on to the amenity of future occupiers, um, one, of the key th one of the key things for amenity of future occupiers is the uh, size, of, size of the space being provided, but also so that that space has sufficient outlook 
and gets enough sunlight and daylight. And that's achieved by ensuring that all the units being provided, 100% of the units, are all dual aspects. So the units here have, have uh, this that and go across this way, and they all have aspects both north and south. Uh, so this is east and west, or north and south. Um, and obviously the ones in the corners uh, also obviously have uh, dual aspects. Um, with each of the units, they all have amenities, have their own private amenity space. Uh, there's a total of uh, 693 metres squared of private amenity space for the flats for each of the four that's a combined uh, through their through the private through their private boundaries. But also there is provision for uh, 467 square metres of communal amenity space, as I said, on the uh, upper floors. And that amenity space has been tested that it would be a pleasant environment uh, through the submitted uh, wind and sunlight daylight analysis that's been submitted with the application. So, and also the other the other important thing for future occupiers, ASIN units would be M43 units, wheelchair housing, so they would so they would be delivered. So there is an element of quality for future occupiers coming forward in terms of in terms of this scheme. So in terms of future occupiers, uh, in terms of not just future occupiers, adjoining occupiers, I should say, should say uh, on this most on this flag, is the fact that site sits uh, at least 15 metres away from the adjoining, and that is considered to be sufficient to ensure that the adjoining adjoining properties both would, uh, would not have a detrimental impact in terms of loss of daylight, sunlight, or noise or activity, but also means that any schemes coming forward on those sites uh, could come forward without causing any harm to the amenity of both them and also the, uh, the existing occupiers. Um, so that, on that basis, it's considered to be acceptable. So the final issue I wanted to talk about was the impact on highway and pedestrian safety. Uh, this uh, scheme provides 10 car parking spaces for 82 flats and the reason for that is that uh, it's in a highly accessible location with significant services that people can walk to, um, public transport, the station is just a short walk, of people, it's just a bit more than a 10 minutes as you can see from this, uh, from this diagram. Um, and also the area in, uh, is also control, has an area in the of controlled parking, so people can't park there. And people will buy the flat in the knowledge that they will not have uh, car parking spaces. Um, also, the highway authority has no objection. So on that basis, it's considered to be acceptable. So in conclusion, uh, this, this is part of the wider regeneration of the town centre. Uh, which is encouraged within the council's policies within the uh, within the local plan, but also within the Harlow Town Centre Area Action Plan. It respects the adjoining development of uh, of other of other properties and delivers a design which meets design quality. It also delivers 18% affordable housing um, and also a con and also a contribution to sustainable transport. So on that basis, it's recommended for grants subject to a 106 and the conditions listed in the report. Thank you, members. Thank you. Right, I've got uh, four or five speakers on this application. I've got uh, three against. Uh, I've got Philip Clegg. Are you here? Can you hold just a minute? Sorry, Paul Edwards. Here. And Paul Jacobson. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hold on a sec, sir? Yeah. And then I've got Councillor Vince, I've seen somewhere. And I've got Danielle St. Pierre, who's not very well, but her colleague is here. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I call first on uh, Philip Clegg. Manager of Daniel Robinson's and Son Funeral Directors, Independent Family Funeral Directors, operating out of Witch Elm since 1966 and in the wider area, 127 years ago. I want to pick up on one of the first points. Uh, 82 dwellings, I believe, were set in the flats. 82 dwellings and 10 car parking spaces. 82 dwellings, 10 car, car parking spaces, some of which are allocated to electric vehicles 
and some of which are then allocated for other things. So I appreciate that you've said that people purchasing these flats will know there's not a car parking space, but with the demand for housing, will that stop them buying one even if they've still got a car? I believe that we will have cars. We already have a monumental car parking issue at Wishelm. I would love to know when the photographs shown were taken, because much like the proposal that was put forward for Witch Elm House that had an empty Witch Elm car park, that is not, that is not representative of the day-to-day -day issue we have with the parking at Witch Elm. We are not just a funeral business. We are a funeral industry that covers the whole of Essex. We are also Her Majesty's Coroner's Funeral Director. We cover and service Essex. We're currently supporting the NHS with their mortuary proposal, uh, with their mortuary refurbishment and looking after the deceased. So not only do we have bereaved families that are coming in that currently have nowhere to park, but we have a 24 hour service that is serving the Harlow community. This proposal will have an adverse effect on that facility that we supply and provide. At the proposal of Witch Elm House has been mentioned a couple of times, and I don't believe that uh, Witch Elm House will hide that monstrosity that's been proposed, uh, but there was lots of councillors that were against the Witch Elm House development, but it got through because of various different things and monies to libraries and schools and whatever, so I'm hoping that lots of councillors here will oppose this with as much uh, vim and vigour as they can. We also believe that the building of this product is going to have another, again, adverse effect on the funeral service that we provide. Dust, dirt on the roads, the simple access to our building, uh, the uh, air quality. I also disagree that your 15 metres of acceptable distance for your light, uh, overshadow, uh, your building to overshadow our building as being acceptable. I don't agree with that. Uh, I believe that the disruption of the construction building is going to be uh, detrimental. I'm pleased that you pointed out it was the developer that showed that uh, in context image because I'm not sure when I'm getting my extension upwards and uh, when they're going to knock down the garage and, and everything else. So they've tried to put this forward as a as a proposal that's a fait accompli because Chris, there are... You've had your three minutes. Have you got short shape? Finish yes. Quickly. 82 dwellings, 10 car parking spaces. It will be monumentally disruptive and inappropriate. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Paul Edwards. Can you just say whether you're a resident or you're in business there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I am uh, in business at number three, which Elm. Um, so I've taken what was quite very interesting. Uh, we have to be secure on a long-term lease. Uh, with Harlow Council. Yeah, okay, so again, I am based at number three, which Elm, which is secured on a long term lease from Harlow Council, um, which is an interesting comment to earlier, mate. Um, I'm also a third generation resident of Harlow Town, and I've lived there most of my life. Would you like me to begin? Um, would you like me to begin now? Oh yeah, please, yeah, yeah, okay. sorry, just because I mean, um, Okay, yeah, so, yeah, which business estate park revision is mainly served by this uh, existing concrete multi-storey uh, structure, which is nearing the end of its life, um, due to the construction site. The recent development of three which Elm House is ongoing. Um, it currently offers 122 dwellings and a parking provision of 88 spaces, 72% parking provision per dwelling. To give context for the Chelm proposal as it stands offers 11 parking spaces for 82 dwellings. That's a 13% parking provision. In my humble opinion, that is very unrealistic. My second objection, the source of them is a business I've worked very hard on to establish with my co-director. We serve local businesses, public buildings, a high percentage of the local schools and hospitals on a reactive emergency call-out basis for plumbing and electrical to land fuel items. We've recently invested in additional staffing through the Government Kickstart scheme, offering young people the opportunity to gain experience while being paid uh, for a generation that's been heavily affected by COVID, the COVID crisis, which still goes on. 
They are able to access Wichelm due to their excellent public service links that, that, that feed into that area. And we are a, you know, we're a business that is expanding. I have no desire to move my business away from the hotel. We've made significant investment in improving our office space at great expense to our business. If planning is granted next door, we're one metre away from the existing development site. This means that the construction nature, in my experience, of piling and extended groundworks will mean that our position here it will become untenable due to the noise. To touch on the technical aspect, the low frequency noises that will travel through are almost impossible to stop. <coughs> Upon understanding the likelihood of the application being granted, I've sought uh, to find premises elsewhere to ensure our business continue, can continue uninterrupted. Unfortunately, due to the lack of affordable space for our offices left in the town, this would mean our company would have to relocate away from the town centre. In summary, it's possible some of the items I've mentioned may be able to be addressed. However, in my opinion, the current scheme does not offer the positive balance needed for the local economy, housing requirements, and the reality of the parking requirements at which our business estate. Needed for the scheme to have a positive outcome for the town as well as the developers. If there's doubt in the current scheme, I have no doubt the developers will have, have the opportunity to redesign this scheme if planning is not given tonight to offer some better saluted, um, suited solutions. If planning is granted tonight, that opportunity will be lost. Back, that's all, thank you. It's uh, north of that building, is a proposed location. Um, I've been there for more than 20 years. Um, bought it, I literally bought the property because of the woodland next to it. Uh, the fact that there's a large amount of wildlife that lives in the area. There are at least two, possibly three <coughs> species of bat that are resident there. We have deer wandering through the wood uh, from the golf course through to the town park. It's quite a nice location out of business hours. And um, all of that will change. Uh, the building is directly south of my property and the bulk of Rectory, uh, Rectory Wood. Uh, the trees are deciduous, which means the leaves will obviously go in the winter, so the building will be clearly visible all day, every day, and all night. Uh, it will also block the sun for approximately six months of the year for a great, uh, great percentage of the day, uh, resulting in a loss of ancient rights. So the uh, habitat destruction caused by it, all the noise from that will definitely cause a lot of wildlife to avoid the area or leave. Uh, it will have a loss of a uh, pleasant environment in Rectory Wood. A lot of people uh, are quite upset at that. Um, you have increased numbers of vehicles. There is no way 82 apartments will have just 11 car cars between them. It's an improbability. Uh, the ROC even state that it's 1.3 vehicles per residence as a, as a sensible average. Um, and it's just the total destruction of the area. Um, the amount of noise pollution we're going to get, light pollution during both the construction phase and while it's uh, actually being occupied, it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, I can see uh, it's going to cause financial loss to people's properties. It's going to be uh, increased pollution. It's just going to make the area quite disgraceful, really. It's, it's just going to let down the whole highway. I think it'll be visible for a lot further than the building company uh, have indicated as well. Since the height of the ground that it's on is uh, far above most of the rest of the town, it will be visible all the way up to the water tower. Um, it might be worth some of the councillors actually walking up that way and looking back. If you can see the hospital, you'll certainly see that building. Um, that's about it, really. Um, it's just that you know. Uh, like the other speakers speaking against um, this development, and I have to declare um, a triple interest at this point because not only am I a councillor for Little Pardon and Hare Street, not only am I a resident for Little Pardon and Hare Street, but I also work for a charity based at 2A Wickshelm. So I think I can safely say that I've done quite a few site visits. Um, I recognise there is a need for regeneration, of course, I recognise that this area is in need for re re uh, regeneration. But did I really read the plans correctly? Are we really saying 82 dwellings, 10 car park spaces? One car per seven and a half flats. Now I already know the arguments that you'll get. You know, we want people to move away from their car, we want people to be riding, we want people to be walking. Of course we want that. But is that realistic? And if developers seriously think this committee will believe that 82 dwellings, 
not to mention the associated commercial space, there will only be 11 cars than there have you on. If regards the affordable housing um, aspect, of course I welcome more affordable housing. I'd like to see truly affordable housing and more council housing, of course. 18% is 14 flats. Now I say I work at Witchelm, and I've agreed with the comments made previously about some of the photos and what Witchelm really looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. And I did take a few photos, which I'll have to share, I'm sure I'll share on Twitter and I me at some point soon. Um, it's kind of the home of the ambulance station, which as you imagine is, is, is pretty busy. The ambulances do park on the road and they do make, make exit and entry into Witchelm extremely tight. But I certainly shouldn't, wouldn't hold that against the ambulances, of course, who do a hugely important job. However, any additional uh, cars, traffic to that area is going to make it even worse. And my sympathies to some of the businesses that have spoken today, because I know and I see them uh, on a daily basis how difficult it is getting a house around, those sort of things. So I really you know, sympathise with them. I'd also share the residents' concerns and, and the concerns uh, raised in the, in, the, in the consultation document about the height of the building. I'm very sceptical about some of the plans and I agree that this building will almost certainly be an eyesore. I've spent the last six months watching from my, a view from my office completely destroyed by the building next to the I believe it says Witch Elm House. Now I have to confess as I say this, I don't know how many spaces there are for that building. However, it's one or the other. If there are a lot of spaces and enough spaces for that building, in which case why are we setting a precedence in this case? Or there aren't enough, in which case we're already making the problem worse. Let's not make it even worse. I say I recognise the need for regeneration, I recognise the need for houses in, this, in our town, but we need the right sort of houses and we need to do what we can to support um, you know, the infrastructure as well. This is a major area of Harlow actually, if you think about it, not just for the businesses that I've, we've spoken to, you've heard spoken today, for the charity that I work for, for another charity that works next door that's very important, that's been very important in this pandemic, but of course it's near the doctors, it's near the hospital, um, and actually, you know, it's already, if you go on out on that main road, um, uh, during the busy periods, it's already an absolute nightmare. So I urge the, the, the committee to seriously consider this application because it will have a hugely damaging effect. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of points. The Thames Water wanted to have um, to approve the um, the water the service um, requirement, and on recommendation seven, they're not mentioned within the body of that recommendation. Should they not be put in there? Because they do want to um, have the conditions. In paragraph two of that section. I can't see the name mentioned in recommendation seven. Um, the, um, the, the, chair, um, the um, issue with regard to Thames Water, um, they have references to uh, disposal of surface water. Um, the whole um, drainage strategy has been submitted and the local lead flood authority raises no, raises no objection, but there are, um, there, are, there are conditions that deal with the actual detailed design of how flood, flood uh, how surface water will be dealt with, but also um, also the actual drainage from the development itself. So they don't have to be mentioned within that? No. Yes, you so. can. Okay. Um, now, also, the four GP practices that are mentioned, it's going to have a heck of an impact on them because they are under um, significant um, operational developments now because of COVID and other, and other areas. How are they supposed to cope with this impact of 82 dwellings and the, the residents 197 from that, including children, possibly um, whatever ages the, the adults are, what is going to be the impact on those four GP practices if the potential for which elm um, is increasing that will also again keep ricocheting back to those four GP practices and I'm concerned about that aspect besides other things I'm concerned about as well. Thank you Chair. Your, your comment, was it? Um, just uh, on a comment, it's, it's ongoing. Was it? Uh, the, the, the application needs to be determined in accordance with policy, was it? No, the policy and development plan. The policy IN6 uh, deals with uh, financial contributions, and there is this need to ensure that a scheme is deliverable in the first instance, and that means that there are certain compromises that need to be made. Uh, for instance, the amount of affordable housing is only 18% and the policy threshold is 30%. Um, so the impact of this, of this would fall on essentially the taxpayer as uh, in terms of debt funding streams to ensure that the people from here would have adequate access to doctors', doctors facilities. Right, but I think I could still argue that one off. Thank you. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just two comments. One was on touching on Maggie's point regarding um, local services. I notice in the in the application there is also a payment, I think, for, for education. Is that right? I mean, is there sufficient uh, schools around that area as it stands for that increase in population? That's, that's an open question. But my second point, I think, is something that has you know, concerned me um, from the beginning, and that it's back to the parking issue. Um, I've heard the arguments as to, let's say, the aspirational aspect of being green and discouraging car use. Um, even the argument that properties don't have parking, um, I think we'd be naive to think that that's, um, that precludes people from purchasing property. There are plenty of houses that don't built in earlier periods. In this town and elsewhere, um, just look at London, for example, where there's no parking, um, but it doesn't stop people with cars buying those houses. And I, I just think we have no substantial you know, reason to believe this would be different here. And we will have, um, I, I know which are as well in the daytime, and it is pretty congested. But I, I don't see any solution. Um, 
to the parking, the potential parking problem, not only for the residents, but what about people who visit them as well? I mean, they're not going to live there in splendid isolation. We will have cars, um, and I think some, some solution needs to be made, possibly an underground parking, as I've mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor. I think we've discussed this um, on previous schemes and we've discussed the vision of Harlem in line with the local plan, policies in the local plan talking about sustainable modes of transport and the aspirations to go towards a 60 40 split. And to do so, we need to bring forward development in a meaningful way that will fall in line with the policies within the local plan. And this development seeks to do that. If we are going to have a greener Harlem, if we are going to move towards sustainable transport, we have to start somewhere. We're starting with the town centre because it is a sustainable location. And that is evidenced in the adoption of the local plan because that information was interrogated during that um, inquiry process. From a technical planning point of view, this is the right location for a, um, a low parking development, and that is how we are assessing all development in the town centre. I appreciate the concerns members have, um, I don't think it's unfounded, but this is our policy and we've got to start somewhere. It is a sustainable location and we have a very clear vision for Harlem and that's set out in adopted policy and development must be assessed in line with the doctor policy. I just want to ask a question around parking again in a different aspect of um, businesses that are going to have an impact um, when people will park outside their businesses around that area. So in terms of um, Customers, didn't they? Okay, so it's flexible use is what we're proposing at the moment, and we'll have to assess it when it comes forward. So it's it's class E, um, which is you know, a range of commercial uses as members will know now. What we could do is have conditions. We could have a few conditions really, thinking through objections that have been raised in the discussion that's gone through the room. We have um, condition ten. Firstly, which talks to about the construction process, construction hours, and, and the like. And I think we can go further. I think we can have a condition that talks to the construction management plan itself, so we can finesse those details at the later stage, which will also talk through you know, how the construction of that development will take place, how it will impact existing businesses, when the developments, when deliveries, for instance, will come in, when wheel washing will be in, that level of detail, and we can do that by construction management plan. Um, when it comes to businesses, we could have a condition that talks about ours of operation, which we don't have at the moment, we've left it open, but I can't see that precluding without having an impact on either the existing development or, in, in fact, uh, neighbouring businesses. This is a business area, so it's not um, unbecoming. Um, we could also have um, sound insulation, but we'll have classy commercial units for the floor and we'll have flats in the upper floor. We'll, we, we've discussed this in the past, but we've spoken about what building control can do and what planning legislation does. And as it stands, this development will need to form part or form compliance with Part E, which is the standard, the sort of the minimum standard for noise insulation. And I think in the development of this nature, we you have varying uses on the ground floor, you probably need more robust detailing and we could condition that out. In terms of um, customers, given again the sustainable location that it is, we would assume, because it is the town centre, people will come and park in the available parking around the town centre, of which there is a significant amount, and then frequent those areas accordingly. Honestly, don't think that uh, it's been thought through properly. Um, 82 dwellings and 11 10 car parks. You're saying that uh, everyone's going to keep the petrol car. You have charging points. We know that uh, we're all going to have to change to electric sooner or later. I'm unhappy because I've been through um, Witcher on my uh, 
And you get my car serviced, let me see you leave. And the place doesn't have the 10 cars, it's packed solid. It's unrealistic uh, to actually say, oh, we don't know to have that aspiration because local transport's going to work. Transfer and hollow bus services are rubbish. That's why I have a car, because I can't ride on the buses. So the aspiration, oh, we're going to have this, is uh, living in, a, I would say, a fantasy land. We need to get something working uh, properly before we say, oh, that's our uh, aspiration. It's going to fail for a lot of reasons. So what I would ask the councillor is, what would be the converse? Would the converse be more parking spaces provided? Because that would mean more, more cars coming into the town centre and into Harlow. What we're talking about is this evidence-based document, the local plan, which spoke about sustainable transport. And the way in which to deliver sustainable transport is looking into the future and what the future brings. I appreciate Electrical, electric cars are one of the options, but electric cars will not take away traffic from the streets. It will make, it will go some way to be greener, but it will not reduce traffic. And that's the aspiration, that's the vision, that is the evidence within the local plan, which is the adopted document that you need to assess this development against. What we're talking about is the vision of Harlem. So you can, you know, you can say you're going to build more car parking in Harlem, that would mean more traffic in Harlem. So you have to understand the long-term implications of what we're doing. Well, I, I miss questions at the moment, but I'll discuss it. No, I just want to know my questions. It's not a really question, but... Got I'll, 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 I'll phrase it as a question. Yeah. How can we be assured that the people that buy these apartments want own cars? We can't. It was a rhetorical question. We can't destroy them. No. I think the office probably answered that to, the, to a large extent. You know, the flats, I assume, will be sold. Uh, the same as which old house now they're selling them without parking spaces. And this will be the same here. So, um, yeah, there's that's always a possibility. But the, there's no way to park. Um, then it's, yeah, I think we're probably both ways at the moment, aren't we? We want more parking, we want less traffic. You can't have both. And as, as the officer said, we, we need to burst. And that's a discussion for in a minute. Can I ask, have you got any more questions? Can I ask two questions then, if that's okay? Um, we talked about the uh, scoring of the secretary and the people, and, uh, but in the report to page 11, it talks about. Uh, if a development does not generate more than six secretaries for pupils, a contribution request is not sought. And the note, in this case, the final housing mix is such that secretary pupil yield, yield is below six. So there is no reason why the education should on, on that. So is that, is that correct? Or does some sort of formula that worked, worked that out less than six? No? Well, page 11, page, page 11, page third, third paragraph, third, par uh, third paragraph, that's to do with um, primary school um, uh, need, um, obviously there's still the need for secondary school, um, and, yeah, so, and that's why it comes to a total of, of uh, £77 per dwelling or £6,379. Yep, yeah. so there's no need. Um, the next question is that, uh, I can't remember the number of floors, but on certain floors there's solar panels, is there a community space? Are those hidden from view from the vista? Yes, they will be. Okay. Okay. <coughs> uh, and there's one other one. Oh yes, just coming back to the, um, which is a question, not, not a question, I suppose, in a way, uh, my property, I suppose. Uh, the working hours you've got to start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, do you normally a bit late at 7 o'clock? That's uh, condition number 10. Is there a reason why you've got 7? We can amend that condition, Councillor. Mm -hmm. I think if the members are meant to approve the application, we'd seek to amend that condition to include uh, a full construction management plan. No. Okay. Uh, just check if I've got any more questions. 
Right, open to just to um, discussion or statements. Anybody wants to start off? Well, uh, uh, if we're open to discussion, well, this um, idea of uh, okay, we're going to have this condition of people buying this property do not have cars. Then why have we got eleven parking spaces? Largely for disabled people and for electric car parking um, charging points. Yes, um, electric cars. If more people have electric cars, what what they're going to do? Throw a coin or lottery to the draw? Because we're looking at people changing their vehicles, being a greener. And yet, you're only allowing set people having a car. I think that's uh, going to be challenged. Is the question how it will be managed? How will the electric vehicle plant be managed? Uh, it's not how it's going to be managed, it's uh, going to be discriminatory. It's not managing, it's just being discriminatory. You know, well, we have your own car parks, there's only two residents, we'll just pick a uh, one at random. It doesn't work. We do ask this question and it comes down to management of the car park. So it, it's not discrimination, it's management. I think this is the, the officer said when I said before, that the base has been sold without car parking. So if they've got a car, they need to make arrangements themselves. You know, anyone else got comments, discussion? So, <laughs> yes, well, I've listened to what all the residents have said. And yeah, I sympathise with them about the parking. I can understand their concerns. Um, but on the other hand, we are trying to progress. We are trying to do it for the local plan. We are trying to go forward and start and recreate. And for that, I will be supporting this situation, this application. Yes, thank you, Chair. Well, on, on page 33, there's some helpful reasons for refusing this application, <coughs> which, um, in, in the event of not succeeding on the Section 106 agreement, um, first of all, the proposal provides no or insufficient affordable housing to address local needs. Now, this only provides for 18% of affordable housing, not social housing, rather than the 30% policy which we have. Um, I won't worry about the transport, but the aspirations and the whole question of parking uh, has been discussed by a number of people, and I, I agree with their comments that we're going to have to be realistic I agree on the aspirations, I agree on the local plan on parking, but um, in realistic terms, more traffic will be generated by this proposal. There are infrastructural problems which are exacerbated by the developments along Edinburgh Way and Elizabeth Way, um, and the whole number of local developments which are taking place in the town centre and so on. And we are not addressing those infrastructure problems. Um, there are spaces, as is mentioned here, open spaces are, have been lost too with no green spaces. And um, there's an impact on education and mitigation has been sought by Essex and also in relationship to a lack of play areas for children. There, there's the uh, pressures on the local health service. Addison House is already over, well, well over capacity as we, we know, and that's the obvious one for most of these developments. So there's a whole range of problems attached to that. Um, I, my main argument, the main problem, is the justification for the 15 storeys high. I, I appreciate the fact that 
this is in, regarded as being part of the time centre, and the time centre policy has to grow high. But nevertheless, this is the highest of all, all the developments that are mentioned, have been mentioned, and also are in existence. It's not actually in the centre, it's on the periphery, and it's separated by a spine road, a major spine road, um, and therefore it's far too high, in, in my opinion, in absolute terms. Uh, visually, it will affect the time park in many respects, and um, because of the, uh, de the development there, it's right on top of the woodlands, it's only separated on the other side, it's crammed into an area, um, and it's separated by just a cycle track from the woodlands, so it's going to have a real impact on the woodlands as well. And so that also is a, a real problem. And uh, it dom it's going to dominate everything in that area. And, and so it is a, a cl classic case of overdevelopment. And um, there will be an impact on rectory wood as, as well as all the other, other facil local facilities. So I agree with all the comments that have been made about the overshadowing and the um, car parking problems and the effects on the facilities that are in, in which um, And I, I think we, we're doing you know, grand gross disservice if, if, if we really pass, pass this application. Thank you. If you look at that picture up there, and look at the block of flats there, and the green and the trees, it looks fantastic. But it's not the realistic side when you go around that block into which I'm itself. Um, the town centre image is that the space in the town centre, so you can put things in. But which Elm has got a big car park. It's got two charities, it's got an ambulance station, walking, sanctuary home, and it's got a lot of businesses, Daniel Robinson, it's got a lot of businesses there, they are packed in to a very small space. There's not a lot of room, because I've been up there so many times, there's not a lot of room to drive around it. You have troubles with that, troubles with people coming in and out of the car park, and it's not the space for a big block that looks fantastic there, going in and you're thinking you're in a green space. I'm all for regeneration, I'm all for everything that you've said on how Harlow develops. But what we've got to think about is where that development's going and which shell is packed. And the ground floor space, the, com the commercial side, where are they going to park? Where's their business trade coming in and out? If they've, they've got deliveries coming into their space, where are they going to come from? And are those 82 flats not going to have cars of some description? Because at the moment, the, the public transport system is not functioning as it should be. I mean, coming from College Street, I know how the public transport system, when you've got a lot of traffic coming through, is not working now. We've got to address that whole aspect of the sustainable transport system. But that picture does not show us what the reality of people working in that area, got their businesses there, the NHS angle, the charity side, and I don't think, and I'm also disappointed that they are right on the footpath, will the construction affect the trees in the woods there? It's certainly affecting, as, as the gentleman said about the tree wood. It's fine when you've got the leaves on the trees, but for six months of the year, you'll have them. So it's fine in the town park with the leaves on the trees, but for six months of the year, you have them. Um, and for the people that are down this end of that section, in, the, in that flat block, they've had it like that for donkey shoes, opposite Sainsbury's, and they've got a very nice spot there. They might quite, quite, they can see the town park, 
they're, they're in a very good spot, but they haven't got a lot of industry as which Elm has around it. So I can't vote this one through with all the situations that the businesses that deserve to be where they are are going to be affected by this development. Um, and I think it's, it's too big in the wrong spot. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> I just wanted to emphasize the point, because I've never made it myself, but maybe anticipating on it, that these commercial units, which are going to be at the bottom, and the access to them to the public is presumably on the side where the cycle track is. How many units are there envisaged? Do you know? In terms of commercial, in terms of commercial, in terms of commercial, go back to the... I couldn't see it broken down. You go up to the ground floor. The ground floor. Ground floor map. This, is the ground, this, this is the ground floor plan on the screen. And you've got a commercial unit. The access is from uh, Woods Yard. And it will have um, secondary access onto the footpath and then the cycle path. Okay, but we don't know exactly how many units that will be broken down into, do we? It's currently one, uh, okay. one, one unit. Um, there's obviously an existing business on the site, so there has been discussions about whether the gym will uh, take one of the one of the units. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a mix, as you say, it's a, a mixed use, it's a mixed use area. So that's yeah, that's that's part of that's well my my, my supplementary is all of those units are going to have deliveries, and you know there's very little space there. The existing businesses there and the traffic is already there. So that that's going to be good. We are adding much more traffic to an already congested area. Not to mention the people that make the flats that they own plants. By the way, on that point, about the without you know, uh, labouring it too much, what parking, alternative parking arrangements are currently, let's say, viable for anyone in those in this uh, development that has a vehicle? Mm -hmm. Which is practically packed all the time from the hospital at the moment. Yeah, I use it when I drop there. Yeah. So, just on the matter of servicing for existing units, we could have a servicing delivery plan. Uh, if you want to decide. Sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry. We could have a servicing delivery plan conditioned into this application so that a plan comes forward by way of condition. In terms, just on just additional to that, you can see all this plan there is actually a loading bay that's being proposed um, to serve to enable the servicing of those, of those uh, commercial premises. Um, obviously, that's uh, part of the wider control of the uh, Thank you. I currently have my car serviced by a company called Mister Unique in Wichon. Now, they uh, have their car parks or their garage in the corner where uh, uh, the uh, housing place has been, uh, the block of flats has been made opposite the car park. But every time I've been there, I was there this morning, that the car park here is packed solid, the roads alongside it are packed solid, and you are still working on the premise that there's only going to be 10 vehicles. It's just not, just not viable. It's just not viable. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there are problems, not problems, but, you know, the general needs to regenerate. We've got to start somewhere, okay? We are going over to the motor ship to get the cars off the road. You can't complain about, not complain, excuse my expressions, you can't say you want more parking, and yet, you know, that's going to cook. No, you can't come back now, could you? See, you can't complain about no, there's, be, there's no parking, and yet you want to put more cars in the area. The idea is that we, we avoid those cars getting into the area, so we've got 11 parking spaces, three of them are disabled, and there's, there's, there's four for, for electric charging vehicles if, if they're around. The other, if, if, you know, and these flats are sold not with parking spaces. You know, it's like, you know, a lot of things, but, you know, the town needs regenerating. We've got to regenerate, we've got to start somewhere. And this, this area 
is there for regeneration. And this is just the first, perhaps, part of the jigsaw puzzle to regenerate which elm. You know which elm, I know, we all know what which elm's like. And it is a concrete jungle. You know, single story slab buildings. It's got to change at some stage, whether it changes with this, or the next application, or the next application. It needs to change. I, I have sympathy for people that, you know, I think the, your businesses won't suffer. You know, you might have more, more people um, coming, but you, we're trying to get rid of traffic. If we get rid of traffic, we're complaining about no parking. You can't have it both ways. And I think with, our intention is to have, a, have the sustainable transport links. We've got a bus station, we have the east, west, north, south corridor, we've got the, bus, the, the train station, and it's a sustainable development site as per the local plan. So, you know, we can't, you know, it's difficult. Not to say we should turn it down, not to say we should turn it down. But you, we've got to face reality. We've got to get move on. We've got to go forward. Okay, um, shall we? Yes. Well, I think we'll, we'll probably flog this to death, I think, you know. Let's, let's, go, let's go for a vote, okay? Um, so on, on page, let me go for it. We'll change the working directive if we can. Working hours directive, uh, if need be, it gets through. Um, so recommendation is on page 32. The recommendation is to go to the Planning Commission. Uh, the application entry to an appropriate one of six legal agreements. Yeah. So, Steve, when you talked about these three here on page 33, that was if, if the applicants don't sign the section 106 agreement by that date, so which is the 15th of January, then the officers have the power to, to refuse it on those grounds. Now, currently, you know, it would probably be difficult to do that. So, that's the the officer's recommendation to grant planning permission. Who who was in favour? Okay. All those against? So that's refused. So what grounds have you got to refuse it? No, Chair, it's not refused at the moment. You haven't made a decision. So you've got to actually um, so yeah, have to propose and second and refuse all the grounds. So we should do it. Can I say that again? You got it. You haven't actually refused it, you've voted against for approval, it's a difference. So somebody needs to propose and second the refusal of the ground so that the committee can vote. So on. that's what I'm just saying. So, so yeah, so so we need you need to grounds to refuse it. Uh, So we need legitimate or legitimate proper planning. You know, you've made a decision, you want to refuse it. You've got to give the officers yep. something yep. to write up as a refusal mm -hmm. you know. Otherwise, you know, we, we're not selling against any appeal. Because yeah. the officers should be able to, if they listen to the debate, they should be able to some of the reasons. The officers have recommended 
The officers have recommended to grant, have gone through the whole lot, and that's their recommend. You they can't suddenly do a turn about turn and say, well, we, we can now say we're refusing it on A, B, and C. You give them the ammunition to refuse it. Okay. Sorry. May I ask a question? The grounds relating to, let's say, environmental aspects, um, parking primarily, and increased traffic, would they constitute material grounds? Yes. So you could refuse it on that, on that basis, which is my prime concern. And I'll second that. Anything else? The parking issue has been my principal concern so as well. It's a sustainable site, so that won't stand up in the sort of planning respect. Are you two? Impact of development on the highways network, access servicing. Well, there's no impact on the highways, is there? Yeah, but there's no, is a, there's no cars. There's no highways network around the shell. I don't think it says that in the report. The environment impact. Health and well being L4. Yeah, Councillor, why, what is the reason for Well, if, you, if you've got um, the surgeries, um, they're going to be impacted on this. Can't that go forward as well? Because they they will, they said that they are going to be impacted in a very negative way on this one development on its own. So if that end, Councillor, you could we could fashion a reason for refusal along the lines of proposal by reason of that financial contributions towards infrastructure is considered to have a detrimental impact on the amenities of uh, residents of Harlow contrary to development policies. Yep. Um, and then Councillor, on the matter of parking, pro proposal by reason of a lack of parking or insufficient parking would have a detrimental impact on highways. Uh, Yeah. I don't do want that. Also, I, I would add that um, you've made a point about parking there for disabled. How many disabled car parks did you say there were? Three. Three. Now, 82 residents, you're assuming only three will be disabled. That's wrong. What can you say? We've got something coming together. Can we? Can we not have? We were all, you are arguing against using the land of infrastructure. I, I mean, it, it is quite clear in this uh, refusal, potentially. Yeah, so, Councillor, we've got one reason for infrastructure, the uh, contributions towards infrastructure. Policies. Yeah, we've got another reason for uh, lack of position parking. Um, and our members, uh, of, our members of the view that it is for development, as Councillor Clark has suggested. Yeah. Yes. Um, we could have a separate reason for um, overdevelopment, or we could wrap up the reason for overdevelopment with insufficient parking. So one comprehensive reason. So two reasons for refusal. One lack of financial contribution towards infrastructure. Yeah. The second, um, insufficient parking and overdevelopment resulting in a detrimental impact on existing other residents. Could be actually cost on liability. Yeah, it's been it's not viable with all the contributions. Right. Uh, yeah. So okay, so we've got so we've got the two people. We also read it out, so yeah. somebody proposed it and somebody's seconded it. So 
There are two reasons for refusal. The first is the proposal by reason of lack of financial contributions towards infrastructure is considered to be detrimental to the communities of Harlow residents, contrary to development policies. Um, the second reason for refusal will be proposal by reason of lack of sufficient parking and overdevelopment over will result in detrimental impact on Harlow residents, contrary to development policies. Okay, who's proposing that? Councillor Harcourt, and who seconded it? Councillor Murray. Okay. That's a break, something. Oh, I'm voting that. Yeah. So, all those in favour of, of those that refusal, those two that uh, reason put forward for refusal. Against. So it's refused on those grounds. 